Was that the original painting that went up there? I don't know. But it was obviously someone made a bit of a mistake that no one really noticed it all those years ago. So it's been up there for such a long time like that. The portraits in this room are the first seven Marquesses and Marchionesses. We're currently up to eight. And we've got the first one here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Henry opened out for the public. Number seven is over here, Alexander, who a lot of people recognise. If I described him as a hippie or a man with an alternate lifestyle, most people probably agree, as would he, I dare say. And he passed away just over two years ago. His wife, Anna, above there, uh, she now lives in, in France. So maybe Sir and Emma may put their portrait in here one day. He differentiate between the family lifestyle and the servant to the extent they don't even put a proper door on it to show the difference between the two. This way, please. This is the lower dining room. There's another dining room, similar size to this upstairs, which we'll be seeing a little bit later. And this dining room is sometimes used today by Sir Warren and Emma. They've got visitors here, they will often sit down. Um, the table seats 20 people, which is quite good, because they have a nice bucket over here which holds 20 bottles of champagne. Mm. Nice party. But if Sir Warren and Emma had a meal, they wouldn't use this china. This china is from 1700s or so, 1760s or so, French Sevres china. Each plate is hand painted, each plate is slightly different. Purchased for the visit, I think, of King George III. Um, I'm informed he enjoyed the mill, he didn't enjoy the china, because at the time he was very fond of Germany. Germany was at war with France, and he served his mill on French china. Each plate is worth about £2,000. The scallop bowls would have iced water in it, and you put your wine glasses in there to chill them down. The middle one would hold ice cream, ice, and fruit. Of course, in those days, ice would have been collected at winter time and put in an ice house of some sort of shipped in from Scandinavia. And to make ice cream was quite a delicacy. The ceiling, again, all that plasterwork from the 1870s, and it has 22 carat gold leaf on it. To the, left, to the right of the doorway is John Thin, the man who built the house. But one of the more interesting people in here, amongst others, is the lady in the red dress to the left of the fireplace. She is one of our resident ghosts. Lady Louisa Cartwright. And she was married to Mr. Finn up there in the middle. Not a very nice looking chap. When she got married, she came with some servants, one of which was a young man who she'd been living with as a child. And he was very fond of him, and he was also a very handsome chap, apparently. Other servants got a bit jealous. They whispered stories in Mr. Finn's ear. Then one day, the servant just disappeared. Mr. Finn told Louisa he'd run off. She didn't believe him. Spent a long time walking around the house, searching for her lost servant. 120 plus rooms, no central heating most of the time, freezing cold, just wandering around the house night after night with a candle, just trying to find her servant. She caught a chill and she died. Ah. Oh. Not long after she died, Mr. Finn left the house. He didn't return for a while. I wonder why. Anyhow, in 1915, during the First World War, the house was turned into a hospital. A lot of the furniture was put into storage oil cloth was put around the walls and a lot of these rooms were filled up with hospital beds. Some of these men had come back from France and Belgium, from the Somme, the trenches, the horror of the First World War. They would survived their injuries and survived the journey. They came back here to be treated. Some of these guys back around East End slums of London, the farm labourer, coal mines of South Wales, and suddenly they were sat in here in bed looking up at ceilings like this.
Sarah's as you can tell, it's not as nicely decorated, is it? It would have been there. And those paintings in there, they would have been hanging up in the days of servants. Now you may have noticed a great big metal cabinet. That was a means of trying to keep the food as warm as possible. Those are everything as a mark for us. This was 1953, and uh, the coronation ceremony would take quite a few hours, and they're actually told to arrive a few hours early for the ceremony. So they could be there four to five hours in total. So they were sent instructions, and one of the instructions was, please don't drink a lot, <laughs> obvious reason, and also bring some sandwiches. But Did we see in the most of the major rooms? Um, in, on the ground floor, yes, you did. And the upper floor? Up, upper floor, yeah. The, the, the upper dining room, oh, okay. long gallery, okay. stage drawing room, and a bedroom suite. Okay. Right on the middle. 